Okay, this right here is exactly how I wore my gear when I was doing um, long range reconnaissance stuff, uh, parachuting, things like that. Although there's a caveat to this, uh, it's not quite exactly the same. So uh, on this, I would have had some kind of knife, right? So, all right, so. In today's world, if you're running a, I don't know why you'd run an AK, but an AK is a decent knife. It's got a not too long a blade. It's not great for bush craft stuff, I don't think, but you know, if you got nothing else, you could make it work. Um, this is a set me bayonet. See how it's really long? It's a bayonet. Not necessarily a bush craft knife, but it could be used for that. The blades actually quite decent for chopping. It's got a little curvature to it. Kind of like a little, sort of like a Gurkha, right? Um, but this isn't sharpened. It's got a nice handle. It's got a nice feel. So as far as a combat knife, uh, and I think general field stuff, that'd be great. You could, you know, it doesn't have the great connection here, but you could have slid it on before the ammo pouches and had it connected like that however i don't like this thing poking down if i go to squat down i don't want this thing hitting me in the back of my ankle or my calf so i don't really like the knives that hang down one of my favorite little cheapies 18 bucks on amazon uh, it's got the little fire starter here now that could just clip on and you know go right in there and then you got a little knife it's out of your way it's kind of towards your back you can reach it with your left hand that kind of thing so kind of cool um so anyway enough about knife stuff uh and then again you could clip the m16 style you know right down there and again then you'd have something hanging way off your butt so you can see this is kind of vietnam-esque modification of gear um because like I said, in the past, you know, I learned from guys that were in Vietnam that were LERPs and, you know, had some light fighter training from guys that were in Saigon. And, you know, uh, so that's where I got a lot of my, uh, I guess, military bushcraft knowledge from or how to load my gear and that kind of stuff. So in the old days, they would use these clips and you can see how those clips would latch into the back of your M16 mags. And so they would use those. And man, you can run with that. It's fine in the front. Um, as long as you're not laying down on it. And I may leave them in there, but then you're relying on these two clips to hold everything together. And um, that sort of thing. You can see I have a grenade pouch for my compass. That's a, a new Marpat. Isn't that called Marpat, something like that? So I have my, my old compass uh, in here. Um, it works great for this. Yeah, it's modern. I would have had my compass in one of these. But this actually still has a, an old field bandage. So what does it show? That's a field bandage. Old, 30-year-old thing. So this shows you that... Um, one, there's no tourniquet on here. There's no IFAC. We didn't go to the field and that sort of stuff. And if we went to war, we didn't have it. We had a, you know, someone that would acted as a, as someone in the patrol and the medic. And that's who you relied on. Uh, you had just this and you had your belt. You had a, a belt on your pants. They were trained how to take that off, lash it up. And, um, you know, use it for your, uh, use it for your tourniquet, right? So a belt, yeah. Um, so butt pack, uh, a lot of this, you know, not all this gear, but like the old butt packs, they had ones that were this nylon material. Uh, I still use an old, you know, the old style butt pack here. 
What I have in here is just a modern uh, poncho. You get these on Amazon. They seem to be pretty decent. Comes in a little bag. But that's something I would have uh, definitely in my uh, pack, you know. And um, at least back there, I'd have some socks, you know. Today, maybe you'd have like, uh, I definitely have batteries. I have battery for nods or, you know, battery for like the, what was it, the PRC 126, I think, uh, the patrol radio. Um, might have an extra one of those. Um, socks, toilet paper, a little bit of extra MRE food in there, some munchies, uh, in case you're sitting on an ambush, you know, for hours or something. Um, again, I'm probably going to cut these clips. Or I may just decide to leave those, but definitely this, the problem with this setup, this is where it was supposed to clip in in the back. And the problem is you're relying on just these two clips to hold the whole weight of this. So what I have here is three, six, nine mags right there, full. Another three, another three. So you're looking at 15 mags of 30 rounds. This would just be a throw pouch, and this is an M14 pouch. So this would have been used for like the M21 rifle or something like that, if you're gonna carry that, um, that sort of thing. This isn't an old one, this is a newer, a newer one. Um, but the point being is that this pouch here, I'd probably cut this thing out here and I would put a, uh, I don't know, I'd put some first aid stuff in here, uh, some CLP, some cleaning gear for my rifle, um, stuff like that that I could get to quickly if I was like at a temporary stop or we take a knee somewhere. You notice my canteens both have the NBC tops on them. I don't know if the canteens today have that anymore. Um, so these are new mags I bought because I lost a lot of my other ones where I, I don't know, sold them, did something with them. Life happens. These are two originals that I had. This is not original, it's like a Chinese knockoff. But the interesting thing about this, and this is where, see, I can get all three of my mags around my thumb, pull them out, no problem. But you see how this has the straps in here? We would always cut these out. So like here, I'll show you on this one. Um, see, they were there, but they've been chopped out. So, and that's why you want the tape in here. Tape keeps them from rattling around when you're moving. And then your little straps get tucked in there. That's how it's done, old school. Um, so this is the H harness setup. The problem with the H harness though, the reason why you have to add um, paracord on here is you need to get them longer, both in the front and the back, because it sat too high for putting on a parachute rig, right? So you couldn't route this through your parachute uh, gear in order to make a jump. So you'd have to add paracord to this to make these so you make them longer and if you ever seen like black hawk down where the rangers are running and their gears hanging down around their ass that's so you could get your gear on with your parachute harness and be able to jump with your gear i'm not jumping on airplanes anymore so i don't really have to care about that i just have to care about carrying my gear now this is an antiquated system i guess or an obsolete system if that's the way you want to look at it However, it's a system I knew how to use and I used it for many years and it worked for me and I really like this setup compared to newer stuff. Now I've got the other patrol belt video that I made. Um, you know, it's for not getting in a real firefight. Uh, with a real firefight with 15 mags, um, that's quite a bit. And then if I had my, with this setup, you can put your plate carrier over the top of it and um you know have more mags on your plate carrier so you could be running you know damn near close to 20 mags you know if you want to and you can even throw a couple mags back here uh in this and a lot of guys did that you know extra, extra ammo and stuff like that maybe 20 rounders in there um 
So that's the basic setup. Again, there's no IFAC on here. So if you want to run an IFAC, you need to find space or maybe not have a knife and just use a you know knife on your pants, pant belt, right? And uh, have it there. Um, so, you know, in World War II, a lot of guys had the knives down around their, on their calf, on the side of their boots. So that was kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to show you one other thing. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the old Y strap system. So it looks like a Y when it's, you know, over your shoulders. So this is the front. Let's see how it would clip into these two spots on the M16 mags, right? And so we usually tape these up so they wouldn't become unhooked if guys use these. But most of the time, we would take these right here and we would cut these off. And then we'd run parachute cord through there and tie it up the same as I showed you on the other uh, setup, right? And then in the back, you got these clips that would go into the, uh, you know, the, the pack on your back. However, again, we would cut these out and put parrot cord and run it right into the belt. So you'd have paracord in the back in there and you'd get rid of the metal because the metal would just chew you up. The other thing too is you had this piece of metal up here and you notice how this is a lot longer, a lot longer. You could stretch these out a long way. So guys like these, so you didn't need to have long pieces of paracord right there. Um, you know, so it made it really a lot easier. Um, so that's how you would do those Y straps in the same system. So hold on, I'm going to show you a Chinese pair you can get off Amazon. They don't exactly made right, and um, I bought them to take a look at them, and I'll share with you what I found. Hold on. Okay, so if you're looking to buy these, like I said, they're on Amazon. But the thing about them is they, uh, one, they're kind of like a, a weird kind of H harness. The sewing here is uh, very questionable if it would hold up over time. It, it's good now. And you also have two metal clips. So if you got a plate carrier on top of these, I don't know, they hang down pretty far. If it's me, I'd just cut these out. And put paracord in there a softer material that's you know not as strong as metal but uh would do better than this i think the clips are the same same they've, they've copied the american metal clips that go in the back again that same uh stitching uh the other thing that's different than an original okay See that right there? You've got a loop here and not a square one. You got this thing. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I've never seen one like this. I've never seen a clip there. I would cut those off and get rid of them because I wouldn't want this near my neck or I just wouldn't want that near my face or my neck. I don't see what purpose it serves unless you're latching it to some kind of backpack on the back side of your body or something, you know? Um, and then, th you know, this is okay. Again, the stitching, not superb. They even got a, a line running. I don't know if you can see that right there. So not the best stitching in the world. Um, yeah, again, you could cut these out, run paracord through there, or you just use those metal clips. The metal clips don't really bother you when you're patrolling or if you go to lay down in the prone. Um, <clears throat> these clips here are not really an issue if you're in the prone or something like that. <clears throat> they can be at times. Um, that's just one reason why I always liked cutting them out and getting rid of them. Um, however, if they did sometimes break because of the weight. These would bend or they'd wear through on the little metal tab. So you could also clip them into your, the holes in your belt too, if, if you wanted to go that route. But then they'd be, you know, pushing up against you. So <clears throat> the reason why you'd 
you know, want a set like this, is you, you'd want it definitely, um, you know, out of your, out of your way. So see, just like this one came off accidentally without me even trying. So that's why we would tape them up and make sure they are locked in place if you're gonna, you know, if, you, if you're gonna use these. See, this one's loose. You could always push this metal together with a pair of pliers, get it to snap up. Um, but this is the basic, if I went to war, this is the setup that <coughs> I would've went with. And you also understand we didn't have body armor. So, <coughs> you know, gear wasn't designed to accommodate body armor. I guess you just tried to make sure you had better medics and hopefully the enemy can't shoot. Um, but, so there was no accommodation for body armor. This is what you would be going to war with, your two quart canteens um, and that kind of thing. Uh, so there you go, I'm gonna be setting this up. I'll get it finalized and I'll make another video like a final part or something showing what I want to do and actually going a little further with this idea. Anyway, I uh, hope that you guys that weren't familiar with this gear now understand how it kind of all goes together. You could always replace all these clips and do paracord if you want, but the paracord tends to stretch over time and then you got loose mags wanting to roll around on you on the belt and it becomes a hassle. I've tried it. Um, ended up just going back to the clips. Uh, so, there we have it. Like, share, subscribe. I need more subscribers. Uh, so if you guys could do that, that'd be awesome. Hope you liked uh, the stuff I showed you. And, um, oh, I'm going to put these on the scale. Uh, maybe I'll do that now. Hold on. All right, with 15 full mags, that is the weight. All right, see that little striker, uh, little pin point right there. So you're looking at about, what, 27 pounds there? That's 27 pounds of gear, and that's only just one canteen full. And 15 mags full of ammo and no other incidentals, like batteries or anything like that. So it wasn't uncommon to have a pack when we went to the field weigh, you know, 40 pounds just for this. Not even a rucksack. The rucksack could be another, could be upwards of 90 pounds. Uh, depending on if you had a radio or other gear and then water and you know if you need a machete and that kind of stuff you know you'd you'd add it up and uh you know you could easily be packing 150 pounds of gear total you know um yeah food all that stuff it adds up the lerp style belt so when i was in um yeah, this is the Y harness. You got the suspenders. I got my mags, right? So if I was carrying my gun, okay, so like I said, if I was carrying my gun, this is a 308 uh, AR-10, Smith & Wesson MP. Uh, so if I was carrying this, I'd want most of my mags here. So definitely uh, my left side of my body is gonna be mag heavy. Uh, the right side, I only carried one in front. And this one had mags. Remember, this is a throw mag of camo, band-aids. If you want, you put a tourniquet in there. Uh, Nicks and knacks, maybe some munchies, skittles, whatever the fuck you want to run, right? Um, so you'd have your 308 gun like this, um, you know, a, a available, right? And um, so anyway, getting back to the gear, I'm gonna set this down. So, back to the gear. Yeah, ranger beads. You can use those if you want. Make your own, tie knots in a string. It, it all works the same. Um, so the gear is weighted out. And uh, so normally I like to carry a compass either here or my compass here, but if I've got grenades or a flashlight or smoke grenades or something like that, you know, you don't want to take up a lot of room. So here I'm just hanging it off of a, a compass and you want to string it in so you don't lose your compass. My compass is kind of out of here, out of the way. It's in my left hand. Again, if my rifle's in this hand, I want my compass out here, gun in this hand, guiding my way, right? Or navigating. So that's why I would keep 
the compass to your off hand of your weapon. So if you're left hand, everything's going to be on your right. Um, you know, back in the day, we carried two canteens. We got the butt pack. Here's two ways to carry a knife. Now, some ways I like to carry my knife like this. So I could, you know, easily have it out, right? But then again, you know, can you put it back, right? Um, the other way to do it is to put it into a grenade pouch like this, tie it in, so you can get to it. It sits down, and see, it's out of the way. So, see, it's not poking down, it's not hanging way down, it's not beating off my leg. It's out of the way. So that's kind of what you want, right? Tourniquet's a new addition to the system, because like I said before, we didn't have them. We didn't, you know, of the belt that we were wearing on our pants was our tourniquet and a stick. Um, so we didn't have that kind of gear. Uh, so here I've added a, a newer tourniquet with a pair of uh, small scissors, but you know, it's enough to get the job done. Again, I want to be able to reach it with this offhand if I'm, you know, I'm immobilizing one hand or the other, right? Um, the cool thing about, you know, new pants today is you got this pocket down here on both legs for tourniquets, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad that they added that. Um, so anyway, you can see here, you got quite a bit of gear. Uh, again, when this thing's loaded up and you got two canteens right now, one's full, one isn't. It's roughly 40, uh, 40 pounds. It fits on me just fine. Now, a lot of times, like I said, if you're jumping on airplanes, you'd release that and you just let it hang. So here it is, and you just have it out of your way. If you had to lay down in an ambush, you're in the prone, you're not laying on top of your mags. And you can still get to them, right? So I can pop them open, pull out what I need, and, uh, you know, run with it. Um, so a lot of times in the LERP units, we would cut these pockets off. So just like the uniforms you have today where you got the pockets up here on the shoulder, a lot of guys would take these pockets off and sew them onto each shoulder. A lot of times I would, I would take these pockets off another set of old used uh, BDUs, and I would sew those up there because you know what fits in here really awesome? 20 round mags. So that way if I did shed my gear and run for my life, I got two 20 round mags, you know, up here in each shoulder. I got whatever else I have in here, some munchies or, you know, that kind of stuff. And the other thing too is these buttons here, you know, with your gear pushing on you, it just kind of eats into you and it bunches up underneath your gear. It's a pain in the ass. Having these pockets, they're worthless. You can't carry anything in them. Not, and you know, hook your gear back up. It's just stupid to have those. So a lot of times, you know, we would just be rucking hard, you know, with our gear, just swinging, right? And that's the way uh, most of the time we travel. Only if we're gonna be getting into something where we got a snoop and poop or, you know, we're, we're might be running into a chance contact situation or walking in an ambush or, you know, doing a raid or something like that, we'd be buckled up and, uh, you know, ready to do work. So in the meantime, the other time, you just find us, you know, standing around with our thumbs up our butts, you know, <laughs> using them as uh, armchairs, right? Because they're perfect position. You know, you can hang your gun on them, you know, whatever you wanted to do. So that's how it was done. So you can see the back with the Y harness. So it's routed into the belt, not into the butt pad, butt pack. Because those tabs will rip off the butt pack. I know you see that in the Vietnam pictures and movies, stuff like that. And, and hey, they probably ran really great like that. But I saw them rip off too much on the, especially the nylon ones. The nylon would just, you know, tear. Uh, now, a reason why you might want canvas is canvas won't burn. Like this will melt onto your body. So if, you know... You got something thrown on you where now you're on fire. This shit's gonna melt into your skin. Uh, the canvas material that was all cotton, it smolders, doesn't burn, doesn't melt. So, however, when it gets wet, it gets a lot heavier and takes longer to dry out than the nylon stuff. So, anyway, now you learned a little bit about this. So, normally I wouldn't carry two knives. I'm just showing you, this is a, an example of how you could carry it or put it on your body. You don't want to put the knives up here upside down because I guarantee you'll be moving in the night and in the morning you'll go to cut, cut open your MRE and your friggin' knife is gone. So 12 miles back somewhere, six miles back that way, your knife fell out and you didn't feel it and you didn't hear it and you didn't see it in the middle of the night. Now you got no knife. 
don't wear your knives upside down. That's just, it's Hollywood and maybe it's an old school way and those guys learned real hard when they lost it because then they didn't have a knife to do shit with. Don't carry your knives upside down. Carry them with the handles up somewhere on your person. The other thing too is you could always put it under your gear, on your belt, uh, under your field jacket and not on your gear here. I'll show you that with the 308, but anyway, just want to get out in the forest, um, do a little hiking around, uh, get the range ready for a little shooting I'm going to be doing, and uh, yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you next time. I'll show you all your battle stars Laying down in the night We can take in the